Hello and welcome to the CircuitPython Weekly for March 30th, 2020. I'm Scott, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work full-time on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed for microcontrollers that is aimed at making it incredibly easy to use these low-cost computers uh, to do all sorts of different projects. Um, if you want to know more about CircuitPython, you can check out circuitpython.org. Yeah, circuitpython.org. And uh, Jeff just reminded me that um, if you're interested in helping Adafruit uh, because they sponsor CircuitPython, and CircuitPython is awesome. Uh, right now, Adafruit's not taking orders, but you can still take them from DigiKey. So if you go on DigiKey, type in Adafruit, and if you actually put Adafruit space the product number, so if you are on Adafruit browsing what you want to buy and you see like Circuit Playground Express is 3333, uh, you type in Adafruit 3333, three, three, <laughs> four threes on DigiKey, and you'll be able to find it there. Uh, since they're a resell reseller, a portion of that goes to DigiKey and a portion of that goes to uh, Adafruit. So if you want to help us out, uh, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to uh, get IO Plus or gift cards on Adafruit. Um, those we can deliver immediately because they are digital. Um, so if you want to help us out, check that out as well. This is our uh, weekly meeting where we get the CircuitPython community, community together to talk all things CircuitPython. Everyone is welcome to join. Uh, to join, uh, just hop in our the Adafruit Discord by going to the URL adafru.it slash discord. Uh, we're in the text chat all week, and we're in the uh, voice chat just... Uh, we're in the voice chat just this time during the week. Uh, our normal time is uh, at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern on Mondays. Um, we're in the voice chat, as people may see. Um and uh, join us there. Uh, one note, this meeting is recorded. So uh, your voice will be recorded from me uh, on my end. And we will post it to the Adafruit YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Adafruit, so that people can uh, check it out if they're not able to make the actual meeting. Uh, this meeting is in five parts. Uh, I'll quickly go over what those five parts are. Uh, first and foremost, we'll talk about community news. This is a general overview of what's happened on the internet webs with CircuitPython in case the folks who are doing it are not here. Um, it's a preview of the CircuitPython newsletter that goes out on Tuesday morning. So if you have stuff that we haven't covered or you saw some really cool things happening with CircuitPython, including stuff you've done yourself, and want to get in the newsletter, please let us know. We'll have links there uh, on how to do that just a bit. After community news, we do uh, State of CircuitPython Libraries in Blinka, which is a general kind of statistics overview of the health of the part project overall, and then uh, this kind of so subparts of it. Uh, this is a great way, or the goal of this is to ground us in uh, kind of some stats that we, we've agreed to care about. Uh, after State of CircuitPython, uh, we go to uh, Hug Reports, and so Hug Reports is a, done as a round robin, where I will start and we'll go through the folks in the voice chat, uh, intermixed with folks that were only able to put notes in the notes doc or things like that. Uh, so we'll go alphabetically by username on Discord. Um, if you just want to uh, listen in, you don't want to speak out, uh, let us know that you're lurking. If you don't have a microphone or don't care to speak, just let us know your text only and I'll read it off on your behalf. And that goes uh, as well if you aren't able to make the meeting. I'm happy to read notes off uh, there as well. Um, so Hug Reports is a chance for you to say thank you to folks for the awesome work that they've been doing. And uh, it's a great time to just sit back and see all the cool things that are happening. Um, don't worry too much about missing some people that are doing awesome things because uh, there's lots of folks and everybody has a different perspective on it. So somebody else will cover it as well. Um, after Hug Reports, uh, we have status updates, which is done as a round robin, uh, just like Hug Reports. And this time we want to hear just in a couple of minutes what you've been working on and uh, kind of like what you're doing in the past week and what you're planning on doing in the coming week. And then uh, after that, we have our last section, which is in the weeds, which is a kind of free form discussion. Uh, if people have questions or there's like longer kind of technical discussions we want to have, we put those last. Um, so that if people can't make the the whole meeting time, they can they can check it out at the end. 
So if you have topics for in the weeds uh, that you think of during the meeting or, or before, please drop them in the notes doc in the in the weeds section so that when we get there, we don't have to like pause and wait for anybody to bring anything up. So uh, with that, uh, again, this is recorded and the notes that go along with recording have time codes. So uh, I'm going to take a time code and we're going to kick it off with community news. Now, Phil is unable to make it today because he's uh, as folks know, Adafruit's in New York, and they're busy uh, supporting the efforts to fight the coronavirus in New York. So Phil sends his regards, and I will try my best to fill in for Phil's, uh, fill in Phil's shoes. <laughs> um, so yeah, first and foremost, uh, if you missed it, CircuitPython uh, 5 uh, 510RC0 was released. Um the highlights here are Microlab, thanks to Zoltan and Jeff Epler. Uh, so check it out if you want to try doing much faster math. In particular, check out 510RC0. Um, Jeff also managed to get in f-string support. So that is really uh, a neat way that more modern Python has for formatting strings. Uh, really handy. So please uh, try those out. Uh, let us know how they go. And uh, if there are if you've used NumPy before and there's parts of NumPy that you'd like to see in CircuitPython, please reach out. I know Zoltan um, V923Z um, has said is really interested in expanding it and making sure that all the interesting parts of NumPy are available in Microlab. So reach out to the Microlab folks if you know of stuff that it would be cool to get in. Okay, next up. We have uh, Hackspace Magazine, issue 29. Um, there's a link from Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, particularly check out the Frogger-style game with CircuitPython and the Circuit Playground Express in there. Um, again, thanks to Hackspace, I've I flipped through it usually, and I there's like always um, CircuitPython projects and stuff. It's really cool to see it kind of consistently in the magazine. So keep it up. And as a reminder, also... If you're in the U.S., they're they're pushing to get more subscriptions of physical magazines. So if you want something that you can read without the brightness of a computer screen, there's things called magazines, and uh, check it out. You'll get, I believe, it's still that you'll get a Circuit Playground Express to go with it. So uh, check that out if you're interested. Next up, uh, EduBlocks 3.1.0 was released. So uh, support Josh. Well, first. Congrats to Josh for getting that out. And if you're interested in doing drag and drop Python uh, similar to Scratch, check out EduBlocks if you haven't already. Kudos to Josh. Uh, next up, Brian Sedacious uh, posted a really cool apps menu for the Open Hardware Summit wrist badge uh, on Twitter. It's very, very cool, and it's like perfect timing to, to go with the uh, lower power stuff I'm doing. So uh, great to see those folks continuing to improve the uh, circuit python on the badge stuff and i can't wait to get my own so thank you to those folks thank you to uh nicholas tolervy and somebody who i forgot somebody else was doing some stuff but um circup got a release to uh 008 it's uh if you don't know circup Circup was originally just a tool to manage and update modules on a CircuitPython device. It didn't install anything. It just looked at what was already on the device and updated it. But um, somebody, oh, I can't, I don't remember. Somebody just added uh, the ability to take a requirements.txt. Uh, Steve, Steven Abadi um, added the ability to install based on a requirements.txt. So you can, thanks, Foley guy. Uh, you can take a requirements.txt and actually install libraries to a CircuitPython device with Circup now. And also a shout out to Joe DeVivo, who is doing the VS Code extension and is using Circup for managing CircuitPython devices from VS Code. So check that out. It's a cool tool. Uh, second to last, um, I just wanted to point out that uh, Phil and Lamar have been chronicling uh, Adafruit's uh, their days, basically. 
Um, and three on the March 27th, they had these really cute uh, icons of Adafruit characters with masks on. Um, and if you click through to the blog link, you'll see that there's a bunch of photos. Uh, they were building face shields for folks, uh, and they delivered a thousand of those to this to the city of New York, I believe. Um, so uh, thank you and, and props to those folks who are still working and getting those essential items out. Uh, stay safe and uh, keep an eye on the Adafruit blog for all the details about uh, what's happening in New York. And again, if you want to support Adafruit, uh, please buy Adafruit stuff from DigiKey or anywhere else you can find it. But DigiKey is our, uh, I, I would say, favorite reseller. They've been a huge support for Adafruit, so please support them as well. And they plan on staying open because they're uh, essential for folks manage, manufacturing ventilators and stuff. So they should be able to stay open. Lastly, um, time code. Uh, if you know any more cool stuff, uh, CircuitPython stuff that I didn't cover here or you've done it, um, please let us know. Uh, Anne has been has taken over the newsletter from Phil and been doing a really nice job rounding stuff up, but we could always use more. Uh, we'd love to know about any CircuitPython cool stuff that you've seen go by that maybe we haven't. So uh, in the, in the uh, Discord, we posted a link to the draft. Check it out, see if there's anything that's missing from there, and please create a PR. Or uh, mention Ann underscore engineer on Twitter uh, so that Ann sees it there as well. And uh, thanks to Ann for leading that as well. All right, that is community news. Next up, we have the, sacred, stake, the state of CircuitPython libraries in Blanca. Uh, this is, a, again, a chance for us to give a statistics overview of the health of the project and kind of ground ourselves into how things are going. Um, overall, um, we had 21 pull requests merge from 13 different authors, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah, stink of circuit, I thought. Uh, some highlights for the folks that I don't really uh, recognize. So Seth, Seth Kaz is a new person. Jay Gillick is new. Uh, Bill Moser's new. HHK7734 looks new. Birdie B is new, I believe. Waspinator is new. And BD34N is new. So uh, that sounds awesome. Thank you to all the folks that are new authors uh, across all of the sub projects of CircuitPython. Uh, we really appreciate it. So uh, to get those 13 authors going, we had seven reviewers. Uh, so thank you to all of our reviewers. And again, we're always looking for more reviewers because the more reviewers we have, the more authors we can support. Uh, so if you're interested in getting started, please reach out to me or anyone else, and we'd love to get you on the review train as well. Um, so that's pull request. Issues-wise, we had eight closed issues by six people, eight open by six people. So we're, we're net equal, uh, both in the number of issues and the number of people that uh, have, yeah, Stargirl says, I'm always happy to do code reviews, so we'll probably have to give you some more permissions so you can do merges as well. Um, but you are listed as a reviewer, Stargirl, so thank you for that. Um, Issues-wise, we're net zero, so congrats. And uh, we're not, not gaining issues, which is great. And uh, overall, I guess I do a summary here. Um, 510 RC0 is going pretty well. And... Uh, the libraries just keep going. There's some exciting work on the hardware side that I think I'll let Katni talk about. Um, and Jeff's been doing a great job with 510. Uh, so expect to see that soon. And uh, generally, despite the fact that the world is uh, upended with a pandemic, I think CircuitPython's online community has been well built and is resilient and, and, and thriving in this world where everyone's staying at home. So. I hope everybody stays healthy. Uh, if you need anything, uh, please reach out to us if there's anything we can do to help. Uh, so uh, stay well. OK, for the core. Uh, for the core, we had nine pull requests merged from eight different authors. Uh, a number of those folks are the new ones I read out earlier, so thanks to them again. And we had four reviewers. Uh, thank you to our reviewers. I think Thea Codes is AKA Stargirl is one of the newer reviewers. So, so shout out to Thea for that. Um, thank you as a reviewer. And uh, we have nine open pull requests where the oldest is 111 days old, which is not too bad. 
and we have a number that are, are much less than that. So uh, if you want to check out full details, please uh, check out the note stock that's in there. Issues wise, we had two closed issues by two people and two opened by two people. So we're net zero as well, which is kind of interesting because usually it's the libraries that are going down and we're going up. So that's good. We have a total of 269 open issues. And again, there's a link in the notes talk to that. Uh, core download stats, I think, are still not available um, here. But I did actually create a Google Doc um, with download stats. Let me see if I can find it quickly here. Um, I did parsing of the download logs from the S3 bucket and here we go. I will drop those in the note stock and also in the in the Discord. So uh, this is interesting because it's downloads by day. So uh, take a look at that as well. And with that, I'll hand it over to Katni for the libraries. Thanks, Scott. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the libraries, and this is across all of the CircuitPython libraries, we had 11 pull requests merged by five authors, including Seth Kaz and Waspinator. So thank you to our new contributors and five reviewers. Um, and I think Thea Codes is new to reviewing with us. So thank you very much, um, especially considering how much I've seen you reviewing. Thank you. Um, we uh, merged PRs from zero days to two days, so that's good, keeping up with things. Um, in terms of, uh, and it leaves us with 27 open pull requests, uh, the oldest of which is 448 days, um, but I do want to call that one out because the original author is uh, still working on it uh, very slowly, but still um, hanging in there, so that's, uh, that's good. Um, in terms of issues, we had five closed issues by four people and six opened by five people, leaving us with 172 open issues. If you are interested in all this information, you can visit circuitpython.org slash contributing, and you will find all the open PRs, open issues, and a list of library infrastructure issues, which is us keeping our libraries to a particular standard, and we have a series of checks that verifies whether or not we have done so. Uh, we had no new libraries in the last seven days, but we do have a list of updated libraries. Uh, if you're interested in that, they are in the notes. Um, we finally got through the Pylint Black updates. So the list of updated libraries is now far more reasonable uh, mm -hmm. than it had been previously. And that's where we are with the libraries. Awesome. Thank you, Katni. All right. Next up, we have Melissa talking about Blinka. Hello. So, um... In this last week, Blinka, well, Blinka is our circuit Python compatibility layer for Raspberry Pi and other single board computers. And in this last week, we had one pull request merged by one author and one reviewer. There are currently zero open pull requests. And there was one closed issue by one person, uh, leaving a net total of 36 open issues. There were 1,664 PyPI downloads in the last week, which is a little bit down from what I usually see. And we now have 43 supported boards, which is five more than last week. Which is and awesome. That's it. Congrats on the plus five. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Melissa. Thanks for yeah. OK, next up, we have Hug Reports. Hug Reports is a chance for us to take a moment and thank folks for the awesome work that they're doing in our CircuitPython community or even broader, totally fine. Um, we do this as a round robin, so just uh, if you want us to skip over you when we're going through folks in the voice chat, uh, just let us know you're lurking. If you have just, uh, if you don't care to speak but want to have it read off, make sure that you're marked as text only or lurking in the notes along with the, t the things that you'd like me to read off. And I'll do that. So uh, I'll give. I'll start off, and then we'll go uh, wrap around to TG Techie and through the list of folks. So for me, uh, first and foremost, a hug report to Zobs Sean Cross for the FOMU slash Light export. Uh, this is a pending PR to get uh, support for FPGAs uh, into CircuitPython. It's 
currently on the FOMU, which is a FPGA in your USB port, which is really neat. And Sean's done, uh, along with a few other folks, has done some amazing work to get uh, FPGAs more accessible. So uh, thanks to Zobs for that. Uh, Hug report to TNT, also doing FPGA work uh, and was poking at uh, Tiny USB and the Tiny UF2 work that Arturo did. Uh, getting UF2 drag and drop uh, working with FPGAs as well, which is going to be a game changer, I think. And then lastly, on the FP FPGA front, uh, Hug Report to Esden uh, for doing a bunch of streams about the Icebreaker and the Ice Bitsy, uh, doing a lot of really cool FPGA dev boards, and it's definitely on uh, his radar to get CircuitPython support on FPGAs. So we've had some chats and... Uh, definitely laying the foundational work for it. So that has been great and exciting. And if folks want to know more about FPGAs but don't know where to start, reach out to me. I'm happy to direct you to these awesome folks and the work that they're doing. Okay, and then one more. Uh, hug report to Higher Effect for the really nice work on the STM32 F7 H7 PR. The package rework stuff looks really good. So uh, thanks for doing that. And uh, with that, let's go to TG Techie. So I have some uh, retroactive hugs for you, Tenu, and um, Maker Melissa. I've been digging back into Display Yo, and thank you very much for the library and core implementation work that you did a while ago. Um, and also, as always, a community hug for making such an awesome piece of work and always being willing to help. Yeah, no problem. All right, uh, we just had somebody join, Tony of the Hills. If you want to speak, we're doing hug reports, which is a chance to say thank you for folks doing CircuitPython stuff. But since I think you just dropped in, I'm going to assume that you're lurking. So just let us know if you uh, have something to say, and we can come back to you as well. And let me scroll up so I can see. And let's... Anna Data and Ann are lurking. Seagrover is... Uh, Carter is lurking. Seagrover is text only, so I'll read Seagrover's update off. Seagrover says, A hug report to PT and Lamore for instantly transforming Adafruit into an agile and responsive contributor for supporting first responders and medical staff. It's inspiring to see how quickly they morphed it into a different focus while fully supporting all the company's staff and associates, setting an example and placing the bar high for others to aspire to reach. They are the best of us. And a uh, hug report to the maker community at large for their inventive dedication and demonstrating the maker creed to learn, adapt, collaborate, and respect each other. I'm amazed at the diversity of talent, both as directly applied to technology for the pandemic response, but also to foundational social needs for education, art, music, entertainment, and creating a sense of belong belonging for all. I am overwhelmingly humbled by the diverse scope of the community's contributions. Awesome. Okay, next up, uh, Charles is lurking, so we'll go to Dan. Hello. Okay, um, so uh, I'd like to thank um, Lucien Higher Effect, who's working on STM32 F7 and H7 support. There's a PR that's in progress. That was a massive amount of work, and those chips are really interesting because they're so big and fast. Um, thanks to Jeff, who was trying to improve our um, GitHub Actions uh, process, but it we were trying to switch to a newer version of something that GitHub provided, but it didn't work that well, so he backed off, but he tried really hard. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to help, we need to thank people who try things that don't work, yep. uh, as well as things that work. So I'd like to thank him for that. Thanks to Jerry for working on RFM some more. He has a reliable data gram a protocol that he's working on. That sounds great. Um, thanks to Dylan, Katni, and Sedacious for uh, reformatting for yet another pass through all the libraries to reformat all the Python code to use the black formatting system, which makes for, you can have any color as long as it's black, I think is the joke <laughs> about the name. And so all our Python code is now um, formatted uniformly. And also thanks to everyone who's showing up for the new uh, one hour show and tells. And I encourage you to do that if you haven't already. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Dan. 
All right, Dave is looking, so we'll, I will read off from David Gloud. David says, uh, group hug to the community. Next up, Du Wester says, group hug to all for providing normalcy to the world. And then we'll go to Foamy Guy. Hello. Hello. Um, let's switch back here. Okay, so uh, hug reports this week. Uh, one for um, Stephen Abadi. Um, did lots of great work, um, starting with uh, even just suggesting these features uh, and also you know going ahead and doing the work for it is obviously really cool. Um, in Circa, um, so yeah, like uh, Tanya mentioned, if you're familiar with PIP um, in the Python world, CircUp is kind of like the CircUp Python version of that. Uh, and we're getting closer and closer to having that you know, work as kind of a drop-in replacement for PIP. So that's been really cool um, to see the work that's been done there. Uh, obviously, as well, to Intel for reviewing those um, changes and getting those merged in, plus uh, all the great work on new and everything else. Um, and then one another hug this week for Jerry. Um, so he's done some work on the reliable datagrams on the RFM radios. I'm going to get a chance to play with that hopefully this week. And uh, also, Jerry is always willing to help out in the, the help with circuit Python room. He's always dropping in uh, little nuggets of knowledge and, and tips and things that I don't know about. So I uh, always appreciate that and learn tons uh, when he is putting that stuff in there. Uh, and then uh, lastly, just a, a group hug for everyone again. Um, uh, just you know, personally participating in this community, community it's provided uh, a much needed kind of small breaks from the craziness of the world. So I uh, really appreciate the community and all the positivity and everything and everyone. Awesome. Thanks, Foamy Guy. Okay, next up. Uh, Geek Guy is text only, so I'll read it off. Uh, Hug report to Tanu for working with me to find out why my Feather M4 boards will freeze up or send timeouts with the Adafruit RFM69 library and for always seeming to be in more than one place at the same time. Hug report to Jerry N for his hard work on the new Radiohead compatible RFM69 stuff. Hug report to Dan H for always uh, his always ready to jump in and help where needed attitude. And lastly, uh, Hug report to Adafruit for being the most awesome maker and DIY electronics company and for making technology available that many of us would not have access to otherwise, for setting an example that all companies should strive to duplicate. Thanks, Geeka. And next up is Hire Effect. Ah, me unawares. Okay. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, thank you to Dan and uh, Scott for reviewing the F7 and H7 stuff. There was a big PR. There was a lot of stuff to read. Um, you guys gave it some, some good readovers already. Um, and, uh, I hope for your support as there's a lot more to come. Um, uh, thank you to, let's see, sorry. Uh, oh, thank you to PT and Lamore for their continued efforts and having everyone work remotely and supporting them, um, through this, uh, tough period. Um, and then uh, a non circuit Python shout out to uh, my buddy Rory um, for his work in creating the Maker Mask, which is a, a 3D printable respirator that he's designed for coronavirus health workers. Um, I'm hoping to do some personal hacking on that project uh, at some point, um, but uh, he just launched today and, and I'm super excited about the, the work that he's doing. So uh, a little shout out to him. And uh, that's it for me. Awesome. Thanks, Tire Effect. Okay, Jacob's lurking, so we'll go to Jeff. Hi, uh, I want to give a thank you to Ann B and everybody else who's putting extra work into the newsletter. I think that we really leaned on Phil for that. And while he's otherwise occupied, it's good to see that that is remaining vibrant. I wanted to thank Dan for helping me through every step of making a release. Next one, I won't ask quite so many questions or confirmation before each thing that I do. And uh, thanks to you, Scott, for helping me with display IO and memory allocation. And I think there were some moments where I was feeling impatient. And if you receive that, you just uh, let it go and help me out. And I, I appreciate that. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm getting there. So I'm feeling good today. Good. All right. Next up is Jerry. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, well, uh, thanks to Scott for reviewing that PR of mine for the R from 6.9. And um, thanks for your comments. 
and uh, a group hugged everybody. Uh, really nice to, to see what's going on here. Awesome. Thanks, Jerry. Okay, next up we have Katni. All right, so first and foremost, I have a hug report for John Park for an amazing crash course in Adobe Premiere. Uh, thank you for taking the time and enabling me to do more to help Phil in Adafruit. Um, normally, Phil does a uh, recap of a newsletter for Ask an Engineer, and obviously there's a lot of other things going on, so that was, uh, was requested that... Um, one of us do it. So I picked that up and uh, obviously had no experience whatsoever with Adobe Premiere. So I got a crash course and managed to put something pretty decent together. Um, thank you for that. Uh, a hug report to uh, Jawbreaker or Kay Walseth on GitHub for submitting their current work in, pro work in progress project for the newsletter. Uh, they're putting together a fire truck light and siren for their uh, son's bed, I believe. That's a fire truck bed. And uh, the project's looking great, and they've agreed to um, keep us posted as they go along, so we get to see the progress of that project. Uh, should be good. To Nicholas Tullervy for releasing Circa version 0 0.0.8, and um, not mentioned here to the two folks who are community members who put in the um, actual stuff that was part of the update. Uh, it's always excellent to see uh, more people contributing. To Slight on GitHub for hanging in there with uh, the long running PR. That's the 448 day one. And they are still working through it. And that's um, good to see. I have no problem leaving stuff open when it's active. Um, and so that one, that one will stay until it's ready to go. To Foamy Guy for putting in so much effort and providing support on Discord and for all the testing and reviewing and so on on GitHub. Um, to the community moderators, community helpers, and CircuitPython helpers on Discord. Thank you for everything you're doing. Um, keep it up. It's, as, as Scott mentioned, our, our community is, is, is built on a solid foundation and is incredibly resilient. Um, but making sure that everything stays positive, supportive, productive um, is really important. And as admins and moderators, there's only so many of us and only so many places we can be at once. And so all this, all the three teams put together have been um, just keeping everything amazing. So thank you very much. And I wanna give a hug report to Ed Keys for joining the community helpers on Discord. Uh, they only joined um, the Adafruit community a few months ago and uh, they were already helping all over the place very quickly. And um, when I originally asked them, they said they wanted to get more comfortable with the community before joining uh, community helpers. And when I talked to them um, last week, they were ready to join. So we now have another amazing community helper on Adafruit Discord. Mm -hmm. That's what I've got. Awesome. Thanks, Katni. All right. KJW is lurking, so we'll go to Maker Melissa. Hello, I just wanted to give a uh, hug report to Thea Code slash Sergal for quickly reviewing my circuitpython.org pull request. Uh, one to Nicholas Tullerby for quick, uh, quickly taking care of a circuit requirements.txt PR before I could even take a look at it. <laughs> and to you, Scott, for a good chat on Friday. You really needed that. Awesome. All right. And last up, we have uh, notes from Stargirl. Stargirl says, hug to Tanu for helping me out with flash chip selection. No problem. OK. And that's it. Uh, next up, we have status updates. Status updates is done as a round robin as well. Um, but this time, we're going to talk a little bit about what we've been working on. Uh, what we're planning on working on in the coming week. And I want to add a third thing in there just for this week, maybe not uh, permanently, but I, I decided to talk about like the hobby stuff that I'm doing to, you know, stay in the house and, and stay entertained. Uh, and if some of us want to share things outside of CircuitPython, uh, games to play, things like that, uh, we'll do that. We can talk about that a bit as well. So, um... I will start, and again, if you're lurking, let us know, and we'll skip over you. If you text only, let us know, and we'll read it off. 
Uh, if you are text only, please uh, try to get it in the notes doc first. So on the work side of things, uh, I nearly wrapped up Beely MIDI last week. It works in both directions and it works just regular with the regular MIDI library. So there's a the bit of Bluetooth um, boilerplate stuff, but the MIDI side is all kind of pretty standard. You just pass in the MIDI service instead of a UART or a USB MIDI port in or out, and it works just fine, which is great. Um, I have a PR out for basic low power stuff. It needs one tweak to get it passing CI, and then we should be able to get that checked in. And then going forward into this week, I plan on continuing uh, to work on low power to add the ability to the notion of alarms. So being able to wake up on pin change, external pin changes or RTC time or um, what was the last one? Comparator. Somebody said that comparators would be awesome too. So I'm uh, going to take a look at alarms and uh, add support for that. And uh, probably also the, the same the ability to leave an alarm running even when your code is done so that it can wake up and start your code based on an alarm, uh, which allows you to get into a much lower power state, but you lose all of your like working state. So you, so yeah, that'll be interesting. And that's kind of what I'm looking at this week. Uh, on the hobby side, I just picked up Animal Crossing last night. So if you want to visit my island on Switch, uh, let me know. We should be Switch friends. Um, I've been playing a lot of Age of Empires 2 along with folks, um, which is really cool. Uh, and it's great because you can play a game in like an hour, hour and a half tops. And uh, I forgot to say, but I am, I did stream um, on my personal Twitch, uh, Pixel Junk Eden, which is a great game with, with great music. If you want to just chillax and watch me play a game let me know and I'll, I'll be happy to stream more of that and a thank you to mr certainly for dropping in and uh hanging out with me when i did that stream uh it's just twitch.tv slash tan newt and then lastly on the hobby side <laughs> clearly i have a lot of time right now um uh, i've been studying for my ham license uh trying to get both the technician and the general licenses because i'm pretty interested uh since i've been doing all this b lee work i've been more interested in uh radio and uh particularly the digital radio stuff that people have been doing and that's you need a general license to do the longer range digital stuff so uh, i've got time on my hands to do some studying and so i've been intermixing that with all of the work and not work stuff that i've been doing so that's it for me uh hopefully uh curious to see hear what other hobbies folks have been doing so let's go to TG Techie and hear from them. Um, okay, so what I did last week was a lot of tweaking. Uh, and I, I did go on, oh, what's it called? Uh, show and tell. And uh, it showed a very, very brief demo of what I've been doing and how it can run on both a desktop or a uh, circuit Python. And I've been working on GUI framework for years now um <clears throat> i've also <laughs> been tweaking it to make it run a little better and finally figuring out some of the nitty-gritty bits of switching pages mm -hmm. um it's been really fun because i've been being lazy and using code i previously wrote in the api to make more of the api hmm. which is always uh and i dug into display yo seeing if i could speed up my Play side, like the using what you've implemented, mm -hmm. uh, using specifically um, Displayo Backbone. See if I could speed up the blitting, and it, like one can, it just is display specific. And I finally uh, glued the screen for my Circuit Python running watch in 3D printed body, and I'm wearing it while sitting in the park uh, watching a duck. So it's <laughs> mildly waterproof. Awesome. I'm excited for, I think this is going to be the year of Circuit Python watches. It sounds so exciting. Can't wait to test out um, the alarm sections yeah. that you're adding to Python. It sounds really, really cool. Cool. Yeah. I'll, uh, I, hope you, I hope you've tried low power and uh, the alarm stuff will be cool too. All right. Thank you as always. Thanks, TG Techie. All right. Let's. 
scroll up to the top of the dock. And let's see, Anik Data, Anne, and Carter are lurking, so I'll read off Seagrover. Seagrover says, uh, wrapped up the first phase of the Clock Builder library with support for the Pi Badge, two segmented LED displays with a Feather M4 based platform, as well as the clock functions for the REPL. The library has a common UI and uses Python structured time so that it works with a variety of time sources, the internet, RTCs, etc. Automatic daylight savings adjustments are supported by a unit converter library. The Pi Badge integral buttons and speaker provide time setting and sound effects. A piezo buzzer and rotary encoder are used on the Feather M4. Built and tested three simple RTC-based clocks using the Clock Builder library, including a large version for a sight-impaired friend's workshop. The clocks were inspired by John Park's Metro Minimalist Clock Project. I've been calling my adaptation Clock Mini M4, or Clock Minima. Uh, on the Pi Badge, with a 14 by 4 LED demo, there's a link there. And there's links in the note stocks also to the Mini M4 repo, the Clock Builder library repo, and the Unit Converter library repo. So check those out in the notes. Uh, lastly, Seagrover says, still working on the quote unquote secret heirloom project. Ran into an issue where server power needed to be enabled for very uh, short periods, less than 10 seconds per hour. Planning on using half of an available Cricut DC motor control output to provide plus 5 volts when active, high Z when not, testing and burning this week, then final project assembly next, next week if all goes as planned. Thanks, C. Grover. Charles is lurking, so we're going to go to Dan. Okay, hi again. Um, so uh, last week, um, I have a couple of um, BLE enabled pulse oximeters that I got off of eBay, that seems to be the best source from them. And one of them works great. And uh, after after I found some people who'd already reverse engineered it, I just managed to adapt that into my code. The other one is extremely flaky and I wouldn't recommend it at all. Um, it's in it's in the CircuitPython newsletter. You'll see more information about that. Uh, so, and it turns out right now that you can't get pulse emitters in the US. They're kind of all sold out. So uh, we are thinking about a project for this, but it, it'll it it may be uh, postponed until we can actually get some parts. Okay. And the other thing, uh, big thing that I did is that there's been this uh, recurring problem on SAMD fifty one boards where sometimes when you power cycle them, it erases part of the flash memory, and it's very intermittent. And it took a long time to figure out, but I think we have a solution for that. It can be done in the bootloader. So um, I'm still working on the PR for that because I'm fixing a bunch of other broken things at the same time. The bootloader needs some uh, love on its code in various ways. But we hope to have some improved bootloaders within a few days that you can uh, put on your M4 boards, on your SAMD51 boards to make sure that they're not going to erase themselves. Uh, then uh, coming up, I've got a bunch of things to do. So I'll turn the BLE pulse oximeter code into a library. I've got to finish the bootloader work, as I mentioned. I'm still working on a simpler um, BLE library for sort of the most common cases of using BLE in CircuitPython, and it makes it really easy to um, do simple things. So I'll, I'll have an initial version of that library. Um, I'm still working on um, a library and programs to uh, use the Adafruit services that we have, which we've implemented already in Arduino for BLE, and we'll move that to CircuitPython also. Um, Moore asked me to start looking at uh, implementing uh, SD card support, which is now is partly in Python in CircuitPython, and we'll try to move that into C to uh, fix various problems, make it run faster. And also there's a sort of problem of calling out to Python from C and then calling back again, which uh, Jeff ran into. And this will ameliorate that. And finally, um, we have several people who are using um, our boards for solar powered projects. And when the battery goes low, they brown out. And then when they come back up, they don't uh, um, restart. They go into safe mode because they there was a brownout. So uh, I'll look 
to about adding some options to the power to the uh, restart code so that if people want them to come back in regular instead of safe mode, they can ask for that. Okay. Hey Dan? Dan? Yeah. Um, as part of the uh, work on the bootloader, uh, are you also going to upgrade, up, update them to use the uh, version 9 GCC? Yes. Yes. It now builds with version 9. Great. Thanks. And the um, I, I changed the uh, the Travis job. It's, it's still using Travis. That's There are a lot of things to clean up in the bootloader. We'll make it use <laughs> GitHub Actions, but right now it's building them on GCC 9 by default right. in Travis. Okay. The other thing I thought of, Dan, is uh, mm -hmm. for Brownout Recovery, the RTC should be okay. So you'd be able to tell whether it's starting up immediately after Browning out or whether it like went like an hour or more or whatever. Uh, That's interesting. If we can remember what time, we'd have to remember what time it was, though. True. Most of the backup domains do have like a few registers that are sustained as well, so... Okay. We can All right. probably I'll, do that. I'll, that's an interesting thing to add. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll put that in an issue too. Thank you. Cool. Okay. Thanks, Dan. All right. Dave All right. P's lurking and David Cloud has notes. So I will read those off after taking a time code. Uh, David Glad says, uh, stuck self isolating myself in a room for my house since Wednesday, mostly sleeping. Hope you're feeling okay. Uh, temperature sensor DS eighteen V twenty plus resistor plus Pi Gamer. There's a link there to the Twitter status. Uh, that was supposed to be useful continuous monitoring, but I decided to stick with the traditional medical medical equipment. Uh, LED swim shim swim shim from Pimeroni demo is linked to there as well. Uh, so I hope you're doing okay and uh, hang in there. Let us know and uh, hopefully you'll get through it. Okay, uh, Duester is looking, so let's go to Foamy Guy. Right, um, so last week, I got a good start on a couple pages in the game guide that I'm creating. So we got basic rendering and movement in a page covering index, uh, BMP graphics in GIMP, how to, how to create those and manipulate them and get them exported and everything. Um, so still need to work back over those and get the rest of the guide done, but got a lot of it out of my head and onto the paper finally, so that's good, or onto the, the E system, I guess, not really paper. But um, And then the other thing I did uh, last week was, um, we mentioned before, some of the updates to CIRCUP, so I took that as an opportunity. Uh, I had played with it a little bit before, but not a whole lot, um, so I kind of really dove in this past week. I got it um, downloaded, I figured out how to get it built and test changes and all that stuff. So I kind of took a, a deep dive into CircUp this week and learned a ton. That was uh, that was really cool. Definitely recommend that tool if you are out there and trying to keep track of versions and keep your devices updated and haven't uh, messed with that yet, definitely can recommend it after diving into it this week. Um, for next week, it will be continuing on to uh, the game guides. Um, a couple other smaller library uh, changes and things that I'll be testing. And then I did manage uh, from a local supplier here, I managed to get delivered a couple RFM uh, 69, is it uh, the Feather N0 devices? So I'm going to give it a try to test out um, Jerry's new uh, pull request on that. Um, and then uh, lastly, I, I like uh, Scott's idea of the, the games and hobbies. So uh, one of my favorite go-to games is uh, a game called Factorio. It's uh, an, basically a game about automating, uh, automation and, and building out a factory to, to be able to make items, to be able to make your factory uh, do more stuff and be bigger and, and stuff. So it's uh, a really cool game, especially lots of, um, lots of software developers find their way into this game. So um, and there's lots of parallels between it and writing code. It's kind of itches the same scratch of problem solving as programming, but um, you know gets you away from staring at source code for a while, uh, doing it in a more sort of interactive and fun uh, way. So uh, definitely give that a peek if you like um, that sort of game. Uh, it's kind of like resource management and automation. So um, yeah, give that a try if you like. Nice. Yeah, I've been wanting to play more Factorio actually. Okay, 
Next up, we had notes from Geek Guy. Geek Guy says, self-isolated self in my room and not feeling well. So, hope you feel better. Um, keep us posted. Uh, Geek Guy says, uh, working on the RFM69 radio stuff and working with Tanute to track down where my Feather M4 freezes or gets timeout errors on send with the RFM69 library. We are not done yet, but I have isolated the section of code where I think the trouble is. And I hope to do some work with directional audio detection using electric, electric mics. Sounds interesting. Okay, next up is Higher Effect. So uh, this past week, I've been working on F7 and H7 stuff, um, uh, where I just uh, got kind of the first version of that PR in this week. Um, but there's still a good amount of work to go. So um, uh, coming up this week, I'm going to be working on adding the uh, F7 as opposed to just the H7. The H7, I kind of went for the H7 first because it was the bigger change. So I wanted to kind of go all the way first and then work backwards to the F7, which is a little bit more similar to uh, our previous implementation for the F4. Um, so uh, now that I have all the tools built, I'm expecting that to be uh, pretty fast since I've added a bunch of new stuff, uh, new Python scripts for importing all these pin tables and, and kind of all of the big structural changes that had to happen to package management and peripheral management uh, are already done. So that's, uh, that's already taken care of. Um, uh, I'll be revising some of the internal RAM management on the H7. Um, some of these bigger chips, they have a lot of different kinds of RAM. Uh, so um, hoping to talk with you, Scott, uh, mm -hmm. about, uh, as you mentioned, about um, managing the, the DTCM, the, the directly coupled RAM, and, mm -hmm. and uh, declaring uh, potentially you know, things like the internal flash uh, cache in some of these other pieces of RAM that even MicroPython don't use, um, right. you know, these, these pieces of SRAM that they've kind of squirreled away on other parts of the chip all in little separate chunks and making uh, efficient use of those if we, if we can. Yep. Um, <clears throat> as part of that, I'll be also making, hopefully making some linker changes since the kind of the sheer volume of chips that we have has kind of led to some bloat in terms of my, my current linker system, which is kind of primitive. So I'm hoping to bring that in line with the other ports. Um, and then, uh, just kind of bringing all that together into kind of the first submittable version of this PR. I just need to make some documentation changes so that things build okay and, and are generally, uh, you know, uh, so that it all all pass CI, um, given that this new chip has been added. So mm -hmm. lots of stuff to do there. Um, if I have time, I'll also hopefully work a little bit on the OpenMV, though kind of looking at that project, it's... Uh, Giant. It's a little weird. I don't really know what the deal is with that. They import MicroPython as a submodule, which I've never seen before. Yeah. Um, and they don't actually even have a board definition in that. So yeah. I don't know how that works. So that's that's going to be a whole can of worms there, getting that board working. We can talk more um, about that too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in terms of the hobby stuff, um, I also have lots of time. I'm uh, kind of in a literal ivory tower, I have my, my, my folks house out in the country has this, this kind of tower office thing above the rest of the house. So that's where I hole up and spend my days. Mm -hmm. Um, but if anyone has uh, recommendations for a 3d printer that does Ninja flex really well, I would really love to, to know, um, Ninja flex is a kind of filament that's like rubber. Um, and I have a project that I'm working on that, that really needs a part like that. So if anybody has any, any 3D printer pros who have recommendations for flexible filament, um, I'm hoping to pick one of those up so I can start doing some 3D printing out of my, my home office here. Um, and then uh, my other kind of hobby project at the moment is uh, doing half duplex uh, UART, serial UART, for a kind of powerful servo called the Dynamixel, um, which I use for a lot of my robotics projects. And uh, that's all off hours, but it's uh, something I'm excited about and hopefully um, looking to get sponsored by um, the company that makes those at some point. So uh, we'll see where that goes. And that's uh, that's it for me. Awesome. Thanks, Hire Effect. All right. Let's go to Jeff. 
So last week, I have been continuing my work on the Protomatter LED matrix library. And, you know, it runs great, except for these little things that you need to make it a complete display I.O. solution. So those are still in progress. Um, I tried to update GitHub Actions to use a newer version of the checkout step. Um, but like Dan said, after I banged my head against it, uh, I couldn't get it to work. So I just said, that's not going to work right now. Uh, moved on to the 5.1.0 RC0 release, which the process of releasing it went smoothly. So that's great. Uh, this week, continuing with Protomatter, I feel like I'm closing in on getting the survive a reset functionality to work, but there may be something that comes up. And uh, down in the weeds, maybe we can talk about uh, what we want before a 5.1.0 release. The number of downloads were small, uh, I could tell from that spreadsheet. So maybe we just don't have the info yet, but I haven't heard of any specific problems. Anyway, for hobbies, uh, I spend a lot of time cooking. I spend a lot of time in Skyrim, some of it cooking. And <laughs> I've got this uh, three key Lego castle keyboard that uh, I just don't know what to do with it. What should I do with my three-button keyboard? Tell me, please. <laughs> Cooking in Skyrim, I think. All right, let's go to Jerry. Um, yeah, hi again. Let's see. Uh, last week, I uh, finally got some updates in to my, this RFM69 PR. Uh, again, thanks, Scott, for the comments. And, uh, and so this week, I plan to migrate all that stuff over to the 9x and get that PR submitted as well. And then um, we'll see when somebody gets around to, to testing this stuff out. Um, but um, and then I just uh, there's a lot, still a lot more work to do on those, but um, trying to move on to a few things. And uh, hobby wise, you know, my, now that I'm retired, yeah, just just life is a hobby. But uh, unfortunately, this last two weeks, I gotten dragged, literally kicking and screaming back into a, a little project at work that hopefully I'll get dispatched soon. <laughs> it's taking longer than it should, but uh, trying to get it done. It's actually kind of a fun project, though. It's actually trying to get a version of fourth up and running on a Cortex M3 FPGA board. So, it's, oh, it's somewhat fun. I think you should talk with and, uh, like Nis has done some fourth work. I think. Yeah, I've looked at some of what 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 he's done. I couldn't find a, a direct way to transfer it, but I, I'm, I've been I've been doing a lot of a lot of browsing of things cool. and. Uh, and uh and and there's there's some some good starting points out there mostly it's just learning how this smart fusion board works it's this it's it's learning the tools and and how to manage this this particular board has been taking time hmm. the fourth part should be easy once you get that out of the way right so that's definitely getting in the way of everything else though trying to get it done go back to go back to normal cool i like i like how work is your hobby <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jerry. Thanks. All right, next up is Katni. Hello. So last week, uh, I updated two guides, the APDS9960 and the VL6180X with the stemma revisions of the board. Um, we took those breakouts and put stemma connectors on them. And so the guide needed to be updated with wiring diagrams and new fritzing objects and new schematics and fab prints and all of that. So we updated... I updated both of those guides. Um, so now if you have the new breakout or the old breakout, um, the guide works for both. Uh, in exciting hardware news, I got Dylan spun up on beginning to submit certifications to Oshawa for Adafruit boards. Um, the plan is to certify everything. And we started with the CircuitPython compatible microcontrollers and got through most of those. Um, and uh, now we're moving on to everything else, um, mm -hmm. which is, has been organized into, into subcategories. Um, but that's the plan. And so we're really looking forward to that and really excited about that. Um, so keep an eye out um, on the blog, actually, for updates on our progress. Uh, finished up the last of the Pilot PRs. So that's done. Uh, Pilot is now updated and black is now implemented across the board. Um, so if you are gonna be uh, contributing to a CircuitPython library 
you'll need to be running the latest pilot and also black on your code. The guide for um, that was originally only for pilot is now updated to include black and the latest pilot. So there is a guide for that. Um, check it out if you want to have that running on your computer. Um, added a library to the bundle that we had missed. Uh, started going through library PRs and issues. Fought with OBS crashing my GPU and entire computer. Still don't know whether to thank OBS or Catalina for this fun new feature. I say mm -hmm. both. Um, got a crash course on Adobe Premiere and then subsequently created the video recap of the Python on Hardware newsletter number 75. This week, a video recap of the Python on Hardware newsletter number 76 by Wednesday. Um, PT usually did a recap uh, during Ask an Engineer, but we have so much going on um, that I was asked to take over that. Um, last week was just get it done uh, since it wasn't actually discussed until Wednesday. Um, an hour before asking an engineer. Um, but the plan now is to actually have the video ready for uh, Phil to be able to show it on Ask an Engineer instead of having to come up with all the information for the recap um, on his own. And that should save a ton of time and let Phil do other far more important things. So that is the plan there. Um, need to update the default files for Gemma on GitHub. We have a repo that has all the default files. Well, not all, but many default files for many boards. And um, the testers and programmers for Gemmas were updated to CircuitPython 5X, and uh, so was the demo content. So I have that, and um, it needs to get put on GitHub. I'm going to continue through the library PRs and issues. I'm going to start going through the library infrastructure issues that we have on CircuitPython.org and resolving those. Uh, basically, it's time to clean library house mm -hmm. and possibly core. On a personal note, uh, it turns out multiple apps on Catalina will crash with CircuitPython devices connected. So if you are trying to open applications and they are crashing, try unplugging your Feather or whatever, hmm. and uh, it might be fixed. Which, which apps? Is, uh, Blizzard did it and OBS was doing it. Hmm. Yeah. Um, played some games over the weekend, considering dual booting my MacBook Pro, depending on the status of my Windows license. Uh, my gaming box is not with me, so I'm limited to Mac games at the moment. And uh, finally, uh, super proud of the fact that we're keeping up with eating all the leftovers. <laughs> not something we're very good at doing, and we have been keeping up like champions. Nice. That's where I'm at. Congrats on the leftover eating. Thank you. I think I don't have that problem as much because I'm too lazy to cook all the time. So it's usually back and cooking. Uh, okay, let's go to Maker Melissa. Hello. Let's see here. Um, last week I finished writing a uh, blanket guide, which is now in moderation. Uh, I finished a dashboard rescan, and that should be up soon. And I added some missing boards to Blinka on circuitpython.org. And this week, I'm going to finish up some suggested changes to that blanket guide so that it can get published. Uh, I'm going to work on getting my reskin dashboard in place and then update some guide photos and descriptions from things that changed. And then I'll start on my next guide or project. I'm not sure which yet. And on a per more personal note for hobbies, uh, I've been working on filming some more progress on a Perseverance 3D printer build from a YouTube channel, which is now close to being done. Getting some home automation set up. Uh, I'm playing around with VR using an HTC Vive I got a few weeks ago. And uh, getting some other projects done around the house. And awesome. that's it. Thanks, Melissa. Okay, um, yeah. let's move on to the last section uh, in the weeds. Uh, time code, time code, time code. Uh, Jeff, do we want to talk briefly about five one? Um, if anybody else has something to say, I mean, my um, position is what I said. I haven't heard anything, and you know that's worrying. I'd like to hear something. Yeah, um, I can do, I need to catch up on everything today. I found some issues with 
packet buffer that I need to fix for Beely MIDI. So that's something we could potentially get in. Okay. Um, but I need to figure out where that's at. And I do have the script to track downloads. So I could also um, pull the latest download stats and just tell you how many people have downloaded it. So that we, okay. so that we know people are actually trying it. <laughs> That uh, spreadsheet you showed had like a, a total of six. Okay. So that wasn't very heartening. But no, I also five oh oh. Uh, yeah, six. But I also pulled it last week. Like yeah, Friday on or the twenty sixth. So yeah, so maybe there are more than that. Right. We've had four days since then. I'll try to run it again and just let you know. And if nobody tries it, we can just make it stable. And then people right. will try it, and if it breaks, we'll just fix it. It's fine. All right. Well, uh, you know, tag me in that BLE MIDI. Um, okay. PR when it goes in, I guess. Yeah, I have to double check on where that's at. Um, I think it might be merged already, actually. Um, All right. If it's in master, we'll have to cherry pick it back or something. If it didn't make it into five one zero, I don't remember seeing that in the release notes, but. Right. I did. I think I did it after. 510 branch was branched mm -hmm. okay um so we can either just move the branch or or cherry pick it all right but overall is it reasonable to make that like midweek 510 if yeah, we don't so. hear of a showstopper great well i will get and in that fact, on my list too and if you want you could just do it now it's fine and then for this other thing we could do a 511 or whatever okay i'll probably give it till midweek anyway okay um just because i want to concentrate on the led stuff now while i'm feeling hot and yep not get distracted totally yeah but yeah Thanks, let's Scott. plan on doing it this week okie doke cool thank you all right and with that that is the circuit python weekly for march 30th uh 2020 uh let me take a time code for the wrap-up um this meeting happens every week on Mondays at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern on the Adafruit Discord. So you're welcome to join at adafru.it slash discord. Uh, we're there all week. We can chat, chit chat then. Um, and uh, let us it, let us know if you'd like to be notified of, notif of changes to the meeting or note stock. Uh, we always ping the CircuitPythonistas role. So we're happy to add you there. Uh, just let us know. Uh, you can click your username and see if you're a part of that role. Uh, if that's the highest ranking role, you'll end up being a uh, purple name on there as well. So just let us know. We're happy to add people as CircuitPythonistas. Um, and the meeting was recorded, so be aware of that. It'll be posted to the Adafruit YouTube channel today at youtube.com slash Adafruit, along with a link to the note stock where you can see everything that we talked about and the timing of all that stuff. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I think we're on for a normal meeting next week. Uh, the timings do change, uh, if there's like U S holidays and a lot of us are in the U S so we usually bump it. If Monday's a U.S. holiday, uh, we do have a calendar, uh, an ICS file that, uh, Jeff put together, which is super helpful. Uh, if you want to just subscribe to that and you can see, uh, when the meeting is scheduled for. And uh, lastly, I want to say um, the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic is happening around the world and our community is global as well. So if you um, want to let me know if you are sick and uh, keep me posted on that privately uh, so that I can message it to people who need to know, um, you're welcome to email me scott at adafruit.com. Um, and let me know if you'd like me to keep it to myself or not. Uh, but I want to be able to keep tabs on everybody. And uh, maybe there's some things we can do to arrange help if, if you need it. So uh, please keep uh, safe, stay in your house, and stay healthy as much as you can. And uh, we'll hang out and get through this all together. So thank you all, and uh, we'll talk with you next week. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everybody.